You have passed class 10 with flying colors. It was a piece of cake and all of your family, friends and relatives probably told you ki 10th ke board ke baad you don't have to study. You're gonna just be all set for life. But now you're in class 11 and it's time to choose what stream you want to do. Whether you need to take PCM, PCB, PCMB or commerce. Now with all of this stress, and that is my one advice to everyone who's probably entering class 11, especially in India. I know that you guys may think that, oh, I want to be a doctor and math is probably going to be the most useless subject for me. But in this age where literally everything is done on your computer and it's all online in the cloud, just deal with it. Complete your math at least until grade 12. And if possible, even computer science, even if you don't see a long-term career. Who knows, you may just end up liking the subject or even better, you may be able to use some of those fundamentals later on in your degree, irrespective of what that degree is. That was a long intro, but we are back in our short series in which we have covered everything you need to do all the way from class 9, 10, 11, 12 to gap year, one by one in each video on how you can make your profile stronger, especially if you are an international student who is aiming to study in the US for their undergraduate degree. In my opinion, this is one of the most important years in your high school career. You are taking your academics to the next level. You're almost in class 12. So don't just take a seat back and you know think that it's time to relax. You've just given your board exams and it's okay for you to go a little down with your academics. No, remember, if your goal is to apply to the US, they look at all four years. So we need to maintain that upward trajectory. And after your 10th boards, you need to do equally well and put in, if not more, an equal effort in making sure your 11th grade marks are also up to par. They want to know how much you scored in class 11th and using, a, using an excuse like 10th board exam and 12th board exams are important. So that's why I kind of let 11th go is not going to work. So make sure you're doing this well. The other two things that you're going to focus on academically is going to be your SAT score or your ACT if you're giving that exam. But the goal is you need to finish writing either one of these tests in class 11. Do not hold this off until class 12. Take as many attempts as you want. Class 11 is for you to finish your standardized testing. So you can take your first attempt, second attempt. The goal is finish writing the test. The second thing is you need to write more AP tests. Now we covered this in the class 10 video that you'll be writing a few AP exams, but it doesn't end over there. You need to aim at writing anywhere between five to 15 more AP exams this year so that in total, by the time you're actually applying next year in your class 12, you have a good number to be in. Also, if you didn't perform well last year, when you were writing your first set of AP exams, now is a good time to retake those tests to try to get a better score. Just for reference, a score of four or five is something you should be aiming at. Now I know that all of these standardized tests and even AP exams cost money, but think of it this way that all of this investment that you're doing at this stage in class 11 is ultimately for your future and it's gonna help you or maximize your chance of reaching your goal of a top 10 or top 50 college. Now, another point I want to address here is a lot of students decide to go to like a non-attending school after class 10 because they want to prep for IITJE or the NEET exam, which are very common entrance exams in India. Now, in my personal opinion, it's very difficult for you as a student to try to excel in both these Indian entrance exams plus US college applications. So now you need to make your mindset as to which one you want to choose. I've often seen when students try to do both, they end up not doing well in either. They won't get a good rank. And even if they get into a US college, it's not gonna be the best. It'll probably be mid-tier at best. So my advice is pick one. But if you are in the dilemma and you end up choosing both routes, where you still want to hold on to your hopes and dreams of studying in the US, but you ultimately land in a non-attending school, make sure you maintain your connections with at least the teachers in that place, because ultimately you will need to go back to them to request for letters of recommendation. Now we're going to talk about activities. So by this point in the series, we've kind of covered exploring activities, shortlisting them. In class 11, your activities and your involvement is going to be at its peak. What I mean by that is not in terms of quantity. I don't want you to go out there and do 20, 30 different activities. 
What I mean is quality, but you spending time in those activities. So you can very well just choose maybe three to six activities or even less, like two to four even. The point is you need to really show that you've put in the hours, maybe like work there full time in the summer or academically been involved in some way or another with some sort of validation. And a good example of this is maybe a research-based activity. The validation of that research-based activity could be a publication that you yield. This is completely doable in one summer and class 11 is the perfect place to do this. Now, if you're still looking for a research-based activity, the ISRP program is going to be perfect for you. And honestly, this is your last chance to actually do something like this. Applications are still open and it's a very aggressive and competitive program to get into. Um, you go through like an interview process and if you're selected, you are matched with a mentor that will then you know, work with you for 12 weeks on a research project that will then lead to a publication. So this is something that looks extremely well. If you're interested in that, the link is gonna be in the description below. Lastly, we're gonna talk about college shortlisting. I feel like in this whole college application process, this is probably the most fun part of it all. In class 11, take a breath in and just go all out. This is your time to explore colleges, go through their websites, watch YouTube videos, look for people on LinkedIn, try to talk to them and see, do they like a particular college? If they don't, why don't they like it? See what college stats are, how many students graduate successfully, get a job, what do they do? All of this stuff. So basically your goal is to start researching colleges. By the time you're in class 11, you should have a pretty good idea of what you actually want to major in, which means that based on your priorities, which can kind of be anything from scholarships to physical location to career opportunities to maybe weather even, um, start making a list of colleges that you want or potentially see yourself applying to. This list can first start off with maybe like 40, 50 colleges, shortlist it further into a concise 10 to, college, 10 to 20 college list. And that is what you'll be taking forward. So this work of researching colleges is something you're doing ahead of time and you're ahead of the game already. US World Ranking and Niche are two good and reliable resources that you can use to see what are the top colleges in the major and just a a pretty general Google search also gives you a good idea. And there are just so many colleges out there. Each one has something different to offer. So don't get overwhelmed and just excited and be like, okay, I'm just going to apply to all eight Ivy Leagues. Not a smart move. Try to have a concise list that has dream within reach and safety colleges as well. All right. So for those of you that are watching till this point, I have a fun little question for you. You as a student in class 11, if you had the opportunity to take one subject in your entire list and throw that out, what would that subject be? For me, I can just straight up say that would have been chemistry. Oh, I hated chemistry so much. All of those organic chemistry where you had to draw the different benzene rings, never understood it. I just hated that subject so much. Doesn't mean that I you know, didn't do well in it, of course, but I will never ever go back to that chemistry book again. So drop yours in the comment below. Like the video if you're watching till this point, it really keeps me motivated to make series like this for you guys and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.